to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Amen. 2 Thessalonians in the New Testament, written by the Apostle Paul, chapter 2 and verse 1. Starting with there, chapter 2, verse 1. Praise God. Have you found it in the Bible? Chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians is right after 1 Thessalonians. All right, amen. Praise God. Chapter 2, and we'll begin to read with verse 1. Paul, anointed of the Holy Ghost, writes, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that, de that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there cometh falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is go called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I want to minister a little bit here this morning on the thought, falling away to the Antichrist. Falling away to the Antichrist. And, and you know and I know, and you feel it, you sense it, you see it, that we're living in very, very unique times. We're seeing and we're witnessing a great escalation of evil. It's unprecedented of what we're seeing today. And what I have to say this morning, and I'm very thankful that you're here today, but I believe... Very, very important of what's happening, what's going on. The Lord would help us to delineate, to minister, to speak his word today. I pray for his unction, his power, his anointing, that our hearts and ears would be open and receptive to hear the word of the Lord. Let's pray here this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come together, together the house of God with the body of Christ. We love you. We love your presence. We love your spirit. We love your word. We love the truth. And I pray that you'd open our hearts and ears to receive of thy word. I pray for the unction, the anointing of the Lord. God, that you would touch this body physically, but Lord, I pray spiritually that you'll touch these lips of clay. I pray for the unction of Almighty God. Let me minister thy word. Let our hearts be open and receive it, Father. Change us, O God. Help us in the warning of thy word as well to take heed to what the word says. We want to give you honor and glory. I pray that people would come to Christ to be saved in these last days, these last times. Lord, the time is getting short. They need to know the Lord. I pray for them, Father. We thank you. We ask you. We pray and believe all this in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. You may be seated this morning, and God bless everybody, every one of you. Praise God. Falling away to the Antichrist. The Apostle Paul speaks of two really frightful things that will strike the church just prior to the coming of the Lord or prior to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will not come back until these two things really happen or take place. And, and I want to show you that both the, both the things uh, that are really taking place right before our very eyes at this moment right now. Some see it, others do not have a clue as to really what is going on today. But I pray by the grace of God that our eyes be open to the signs and the times in which we are now living in. First of all, Paul tells us that in the last days there will be a great falling away, an apostasy, if you will, a falling away. And there's no doubt that we've really been seeing this in the past 20, 25, maybe even 30 years as hearts have been growing cold and dull towards God and the things of God, so much to the fact that the church has reduced itself from being a house of prayer to now being a house of entertainment. It seems that people are drawn to that. They like that. They desire that. And really it sickens my heart to see what is taking place today in the name of Jesus, in the name of God. And many people really are deceived today. It's hard to get people to be faithful. It's hard to get people to pray. It's hard to get people to meditate upon God's word today that they would just desire Christ and Christ alone. I've mentioned this before, but I plead the church needs to get back to, to the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. The church has reduced itself to trying to entertain the tears. It loves the hype. It loves the noise more than it loves God. I see the car our carnality. I, I see the flesh taking over. I see the lack of hunger for God. I see the lack of power. And I see many things that come in the name of Christ that God has nothing to do with. And then secondly, Paul warns that an evil antichrist spirit that will overtake many believers uh, who are turning aside, they're apostatizing, they're turning away from God.
God. I can't tell you how many people that I've known through the years that were one time serving the Lord and have turned away from God. They've given up on the Lord. They've quit the faith. They've quit on God. And they no longer are serving the Lord, but they cater to themselves. And they live for, they don't lo, no longer live for God, but now they're living for their own pleasures and the pleasures of the flesh. Now the church has been preaching and teaching for years about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been preaching and teaching for years even about the coming of the Antichrist. And we've been expecting the appearance of the man of sin, the son of perdition. Some speculate that he will be revealed in our day, in our time. Some think that he's already been born and he lives somewhere else on the face of this earth. It's very possible that he is, but we really cannot say for sure. I personally think that he is because I believe that Jesus can come at any moment. But listen, my beloved friends, there will be such a man on this earth. Yep, the question to that is absolutely, I believe there will be if he isn't already here, but he'll be totally possessed of Satan. Uh, when he appears, he will be well received and uh, he will be, he will demand the de devotion of all of mankind and he will set himself up as God before the world. And I believe right now that the conditions are right for such a thing to happen. I don't know what you think. I don't know what you see, but I see the movement. I see the, I feel the spirit. I can sense it in my heart, the direction that all this is taking right now. People are looking for answers. They think that some man is going to help them and eliminate all of their problems. So let me just say this, whether you agree with me or not, and sure, you have the right to your own opinion, of course, but whether you agree with me or not, the government is not our answer. Let me just say this here today. Politics is not our answer. The Democratic Party or the Republican Party or the Independent Party is not your answer. Yes, we need good and honest and caring politicians running our country, and we ought to vote the good ones in and vote out the bad ones and vote out the corrupt ones. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say as your pastor here today, that the answer to every problem and the answer to every difficulty and the answer to every troubled situation is Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty. Oh, my beloved friends, can I say that the problem with this nation and the problem with the world is a problem we've had since the fall of man. We have a sin problem. We have a sin problem. And hearts are evil and men are drawn to darkness. And because of the sin problem, we have evil on this earth and we have hatred and we have racism and wickedness and perversion because of the sin problem. We have homosexuality and transgenderism and corruption, lies and murder and covetousness and so forth. It's not a political problem. It is a sin problem. And the sooner we find that out, the better off we will be. If any man can change the evil and corrupt heart of humanity, it is the man, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus is the only one that can forgive sin. He is the only one who can change the heart. He's the only one that can make a difference. Our redemption and our hope and our joy and our everything that, we, that we'll ever need will be found in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to God. It's in him we live and move and have our being wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. The only reason the Antichrist has not been revealed yet is because his time has not come. But one day the Holy Ghost will lift his restraining hand and the man of sin will be revealed to this world in full force. The Bible assures us that when this evil man's time is finished that he will be consumed by God. The scripture says and then the lawless one, that's the Antichrist referred to in the Bible as the beast or the little horn will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. And so there'll be a day of reckoning for the Antichrist and he will be destroyed. Revelation 10, 20 and 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast, there it is, that's the Antichrist and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night forever and forever. Thank God that we'll be rid of Satan. We'll be rid of the Antichrist. Rid of the false prophet and his demonic forces forever and eternity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. When the devil is messing with you, you just remind him that there's an end coming to him. Glory to God. I want to say this, that, that yes, we have trials and yes, we have difficulties and yes, we have tribulation and yes, there are powers 
powers of darkness, Ephesians 6 and 12 reveals that to us. There are wicked spirits in high places and heavenly places that come against the child of God, come against your thoughts and try to bring you down and discourage you. But I want you to know and serve notice on the devil that we as children of God, we as Christians, we as sons and daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ are more than conquerors through the one that has conquered death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than, li- than he that's in the world. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my beloved friends, thank God we're on the victory side. Amen. It may be tough. It might be hard now, but one day we'll be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We'll be with the Lord. Praise God. Now, now, there is an antichrist, but there also is an antichrist spirit. Now, we have a Savior who exists right now in glory as a man. He's the son of man. He's a living person. I don't think we think about this too much, but Jesus Christ is a living person with flesh and bone and hair and eyes. And Daniel saw him, and his face was the appearance of a lightning, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. Daniel 10 and 6 tells us that. It's hard for us to imagine, but we have a great high priest who represents us before the Father. And although we're here on this earth, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ dwells within us. And the Bible says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our, or into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, amen. Oh, yes, there is. The Spirit of Almighty God lives and dwells within us, and we worship God, and we pray, and we talk to the Lord, and we walk with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. We can hear the voice of God as the Lord will guide and lead our steps and direct us. But yet there's another spirit that is at work in the world. It is the spirit or the antichrist spirit. It's not the spirit of God. It's not the spirit of Christ, but the spirit that opposes Christ and all those that belong to Jesus. Just as Christ has given us his spirit, there is an antichrist spirit possessing many apostate Christians, people that have turned away from God, turned away from the Lord and turned away from the faith and that spirit is at work in the world preparing hearts for the coming of the man of sin, for the coming and the rising of the Antichrist. Now listen, I believe I I don't know what you believe but I'm hoping I'm praying, I'm believing that we'll be raptured up out of here before the revealing of the Antichrist. I want you to know I'm not looking for the devil I'm not looking for the Antichrist I'm looking for Jesus I'm looking for Christ to come and rapture his church up and meet him in the air. Hallelujah. We'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye. How glory to God. This corruptible put on incorruption. This mortal body put on immortality. Praise the Lord. Amen. I put in my order for a new body, church. Amen. Praise God. But you know, there's an antichrist spirit, and at times I can feel the antichrist spirit opposing me while I'm preaching, while I'm teaching. It wants nothing to do with God, nothing to do with His Word, nothing to do with His will. It resists God, it resists God's spirit. And the Apostle John said, And this is the spirit of the antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Can you say, In the world? He's already in the world. John is saying you've heard about the coming of the Antichrist. It's been preached and taught to you about his and expect his revival. Wake up because the spirit of the Antichrist is already here. It's already working. It's just not coming one day. It is here right now. Presently. Now we must understand the Antichrist is not going to suddenly appear on the scene and overwhelm mankind, but rather his spirit is mysteriously at work right now, setting up his kingdom in cold and compromising hearts. And when the man of sin finally appears, he will publicly be revealed to a world that's already prepared for him. I think that's what's going on right now. The mysterious working of darkness in this mysterious Antichrist my spirit is working in the hearts of men and women and people today, preparing their hearts for the rising and the coming of the Antichrist. And then when he comes on the scene, they will accept 
at him and say that he is the answer and he is everything we have been looking for and they will look to him as some kind of God because he will there will be signs and miracles that he'll perform and the people will be deceived because they have turned their hearts away from the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the way of salvation and so their hearts are being prepared even right now into which the spirit already possesses people's uh, hearts are growing increasingly colder and colder notice this I've noticed this in the church world today colder towards God colder towards uh, his word uh, colder towards the gospel colder towards prayer right now we are already seeing a growing antichrist mindset and conduct in the world uh, but soon this will turn into a flowing stream and eventually a vast ocean and when the antichrist finally appears uh, even many former Christians let me just say this former Christians uh, people that once served God uh, will welcome him because their hearts will be a, of a kindred spirit with the antichrist spirit uh, I believe we are seeing this right now in, with so much evil and darkness uh, and perversion in the world and in our time there are things that we are thinking about talking about hearing about that we never thought or th uh, thought about before ever in our lives uh, the world that is uh, sexualizing children trying to teach them in the kindergarten and preschools of what kind of gender they can be. Uh, schools that allow drag queens to perform before students. Uh, parents that bring their children to strip shows. I lie not to you. This is what's going on today. Uh, the evil and the vulgarity and the filth are, are beyond description. And there are things that are so evil and demented and darkened and diabolical and demonic that I can't even talk to them to you today. Uh, I cannot share these things to you. Uh, America makes Sodom and Gomorrah look like an amusement park compared to what we have become. This nation has become a moral sewage cesspool of evil and corruption at beggar's description. We're living in a day when right is viewed as wrong and wrong is viewed as right. It's anything goes. There is the reprobate thinking of a multi-genderism. Oh, but pastor, you ought, you're going to hurt their feelings. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but I don't want them to be deceived by Satan and the Antichrist spirit. I don't want them to go to a lost and dying hell. They say, well, pastor, if you don't accept them the way they are, that means that you do not love them. No, my beloved friends, that's a lie of Satan and a lie of the world. But because I love them and because I care about them and because I care about their eternal destiny and because I care about their soul, I must declare to them the truth and the love of Almighty God that God has not created multi-genders. There are only two genders that God created Adam and Eve in the garden and God has made man to be man and God has made woman to be woman that is the divine call and order of God yeah. oh Lord are you, you alright if I keep on with this today yeah. hallelujah oh Lord my Lord my God my God oh my beloved friends there's a reprobate thinking today Repubate government today. Repubate people that have doctorate degrees, de master's degrees, but they're repubate in their thinking. They're repubate uh, in thinking that there's multi-genderism. They, they're repubate in thinking that men can get pregnant and have babies. Uh, what's happened today and what you're seeing is it's not just one party against another, but now you're talking about people that think they're God and they can speak things into existence and they can make up the rules and make up the laws and anything goes uh, and if blue is green, then the blue is green. That's what they say. If white is red, then white is red. They can change whatever they want. That's what they believe today. Oh, it's repubate uh, thinking that man can get pregnant. How foolishness is that? Uh, and yet these people are running for offices that are going to lead this nation in a direction uh, that will end up in a lost and dying hell, my friend. Uh, this is an abomination. Uh, Satan turning and twisting everything God made to be holy, to be clean, and to be pure. There's mass confusion. Confusion today and chaos, loss of identity. Children don't know who they are anymore. And you've got teachers now. I was talking to some of my children uh, on the bus, and these are middle school and ninth graders and tenth graders. And I was talking to them the other day on the bus, and some of them said they're going to move to Canada. When they get old enough, they're going to move to Canada. And I said, well, I said, that's going to be kind of tough there. You know, it's a socialist country now, and they're in a difficult place. And they said, well, uh, we like socialism. We, don't, we think it's not such a bad idea. And so I got to talking to them about this and what it really is and what it really means. 
teens, and they, you know, kids are young. And they say, well, they don't care. It's okay. And then one of the students said, one of the teachers are talking to the children. Now, the teachers are talking to the kids and say, well, a little bit of socialism is okay. And that's what they're telling the kids. They're just a little bit at a time. A little bit of socialism is okay. No, it is not, my friend. A little bit of communism is not okay. And a little bit of socialism is not okay. No, no, no. But they're getting our kids when they're young in school today, and they're trying to twist and taint things and trying to talk them into things and get into their minds and get into their thinking. Oh, my beloved, I can say many of them have lost their identity. But by the way, God is a God of peace. God is not a God of confusion. Satan is the spirit of confusion and turmoil. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work and has been at work for a long time. Oh, but it's been escalating uh, at an alarming rate here in the last several years. And not only is he at work in the world, but also, let me just say this, the Antichrist spirit is at work in the church, in the church. Paul warned us about this. He said that in the last days, false prophets would be in, infiltrate the church, preaching another gospel, preaching another Jesus. It's hard to believe, but there are churches that agree with sin. I tell you, I lie not to you. I'm going to tell you the very truth. I'm just going to go ahead and expose this today. There are churches that, that agree with sin. They agree with homosexuality. I want to say this here today too. They accept it and they approve of it. They say that God is okay with it. I'm telling you the truth. This is what they say. In other words, there are churches out there and they'll have signs out there and says we accept uh, that community. We accept homosexuality. Now, let me just say this. Everybody is welcome to this church. Regardless of who you are, you are welcome to be a part of this church. But what churches are saying today is that we accept you means this. We agree with your lifestyle and God agrees with your lifestyle and you can live that way and still make it to heaven. That is contrary to the Bible. It's contrary to the word of God. We love you. We want to see God save you. And when God saves you, he'll change your heart. He'll change your thinking. He'll bring you out of that perversion. He'll bring you out of that darkness. God will give you purpose and a desire to live and he will put his will in your heart and you will desire to do and to serve God and to do the will of God. But only Jesus can do that. Oh, but such false prophets have already been preaching the gospel of the Antichrist. Paul said, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Already at work means presently. Right now, it's already at work. Even when John the Apostle and Paul the Apostle wrote these things back about 2,000 years ago, he was at work then, he's at work now. You see it happening. The Antichrist spirit is even invading the hearts of many apostate Christians. They're being absolutely possessed of evil. You might wonder how could this ever happen? It's because they have become like minded with him. See John writes this. Do not love the world. And when it says the world, it's talking about the sinful pleasures of the world or to love the antichrist spirit in the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him. In other words it's impossible for you to love and desire the things of the world and have the love of the father inside of our hearts. Verse 16 for all that is in the world. Well what's in the world pastor? Well it says right here the lust of the flesh, the lust the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Little children, or talking to the church, to Christians, it is the last hour. He says it's the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even so, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. When it says many Antichrists have come, it really means that everything that opposes God, it opposes the church, it opposes the things of the Lord. John is warning us that those who still love the things of this world, all the lust, all the pleasures, have opened themselves up to the Spirit of the Antichrist. Now John is saying, you know that these are the last days because so many are full of this worldly, covetous spirit. Listen, my beloved friends, I preach this because I love you. I preach this to warn us. If we haven't come under the total lordship of Jesus Christ, if we haven't totally surrendered our lives to him, and if we don't acknowledge him in all our ways, then we have the propensity of opening ourselves up to the spirit of evil. Yes, we do. We have the propensity to open ourselves up to the Antichrist spirit. It's those who have not totally surrendered or sold out to Christ that I've seen fall away from him. Uh, They haven't bought the pearl. They haven't bought the field. They hold back. They don't give their all. They're not sold out. And like Demas, they go right back into the world. Oh, but my beloved, those who are righteous, those that love God, who worship God in spirit and truth are prime targets of the Antichrist. Paul said, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. 
The spirit of Antichrist is opposed to all who walk close to God, like you and I, that desire God and have a close relationship with the Lord. He goes after true worshipers because he wants their worship for himself. Satan wants to do nothing more than to destroy pure worship. He wants to rob God of all praise. Remember Lucifer? Remember him? The son of the morning, the Bible says, was at one time in charge of God's angelic choir, but he rebelled against God because he wanted to be God. Remember that? He was lifted up in himself, and he wanted to be God. So God cast Lucifer out of heaven, along with one-third of the angels that rebelled against God. Lucifer, remember this? He became Satan, the accuser, the deceiver. And if you walk with God and you love the Lord with all your heart, the Antichrist spirit, I know, will come against you with everything that he has. Expect it. He will attack you with fear and with doubt and unbelief. He will attack your mind and your thoughts and your health. He'll attack you with everything that will give him an inroad to hinder your worship. That's right. Don't let Satan rob you of the worship that's due for the Lord. Give God glory whether the piano player here is, is here or not, whether we just have some guitars and some tambourines and some voices. We can clap our hands and we can worship God and we can magnify the Lord for he is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. For he is the God of glory and we are the body of Christ. We are his church, his children, his people. We're in the family of God and the spirit of God lives in our heart and we can cry, Abba, Father, amen. Hallelujah. Praise. I get excited about that. I love that. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, my goodness. Yet I find, you know, his spirit of lawlessness is being restrained by the Holy Ghost. God's restraining power. God's restraining force. And Paul said, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in, its own, in, in his own time. It's the power of God's spirit in his church. In other words, it's the spirit of God in us that holds back Satan's anarchy. And he hates it. The devil hates it. The spirit of righteousness in the believer. The spirit of truth. The spirit of life. The spirit of God. The spirit of love. The spirit of power that dwells inside of us uh, restrains uh, the evil from having full force on the earth. That's why people don't like you sometimes. Uh, uh, the world out there doesn't like you. The sinner out there doesn't like you. Maybe you have a son or a daughter that's not saved and they come around you and they just feel the spirit of truth, the spirit of life, the spirit of power. They feel that and it convicts them and they're uneasy around you and they don't want to be around you and they don't want to talk to you because you might talk about Jesus. You might talk about the Lord. You might share with them the truth of the word of God and they don't want to hear the truth truth of the word of God because they want to go their own way because they love their darkness. But the fact is you do love them and you do care about them but they don't receive it like that. If God were to lift his finger, his spirit from godly Christians and his church, our nation would be a raging hell. And it's heading that way right now. It's already bad and getting worse. The less light, the more darkness. The church as a whole is getting more dull, not brighter. Just like in the book of 1 Samuel, just before the lamp of God went out, the Holy Spirit was revealing something to us. Turn on the light, the bugs scatter. You ever done that before? Man, you turn on the light, the bugs scatter. Bugs loved hide in darkness. Men love their darkness. Those Christians that are lazy and careless and those Christians who have never forsaken their sin and those who are still engrossed in the things of this world, they will not be able to stand in these last days. They will fall. And there you have the apostasy of the church. See, there's a separation taking place today between the sheep and the goats. The sheep are the ones that belong to God. He's our shepherd. And we listen to his voice. And we know his voice. And his voice will always line up with the Bible, with the word of God. But there are a lot of voices today. But the sheep, the true sheep, they know the voice of their shepherd. They know. All right, I know this is kind of heavy. You guys okay? All right, let me just preach where we're at today. Peter gave the warning by saying this. He said, for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, listen to this, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in other words, they're saved. He says, he says they are again entangled or trapped in them and overcome the latter and is worse for them than the beginning. For if, he says, for it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having to know it to turn from the holy commandments delivered to them. It's incredible. In the next verse, verse 22, I don't have it up there on the screen, but it's talking about how a, a dog will return to its vomit and a pig, when it's clean, then returns to its mud. Ugh. It's slop. It's dirt. It's grime. 
And Peter is describing the people that claimed to be saved. They once escaped the pollutions of the world. They were one time delivered by the power of God. They had known the way of righteousness. They were enlightened. They had tasted the heavenly gift. Listen to this. They had become partakers of the Holy Ghost and tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. They knew God. They were saved. The Spirit of God lived in them. And yet they came entangled once again in what? In sin. They became passive and lukewarm like a days ago. In their relationship with God, they were eventually overcome by the spirit of the Antichrist. People will argue the point and say that Peter was talking about the unbeliever. They, they just want to force their false doctrine, eternal security. I know all that. But Peter couldn't have been talking about the non-believers. The unsaved have no faith to fall away from. Rather, those who fall away have something to fall away from. Obviously, Peter is talking about the apostate Christian or the apostate church. Understand, half-hearted believers do more than just fall away from the Lord. They also fall into something. They fall into something. They fall into the hands of the Antichrist spirit. Peter says that such people have been overcome. They've been overcome. Paul makes an astounding statement. He says this, so that he sits as God in the temple of God. Now, are we as Christians not the temple of the Holy Ghost? Yes. The answer is yes. God dwells within our hearts. Is this true? Yes. He's Lord of our lives. We have been bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus purchased us, right? Yes. Not only will that day come when the Antichrist will set himself up in the temple and proclaim himself to be God. True, this day is yet to come, and it will come. Three and a half years into the tribulation, the Antichrist will break the peace treaty with Israel, and he'll set himself up in the temple as God. But I believe that it's possible that right now, right now, he is possibly ascending his throne in people's hearts. Ah, oh, now, that's a whole no ball game now. Something different there. We talking about, yes. He's, big, he's ascending in the hearts of people. There are going to be, there are going to be, uh, there, there, there are going to be, going to be one of two things that take possession of the throne of our hearts. It's either going to be God or it's going to be the Antichrist. I'm going to say that. One of two things can take possession of your heart. Either, either God or the Antichrist. The choice is yours. But if God is not Lord of your life and heart, then the spirit of Antichrist is. What am I saying? You can't serve two masters. Yes, we're the temple of God. Yes. But for some, another spirit has invaded that temple. The spirit of God is gone. And lust and pride and covetousness and greed and slander is now reigning supremely in their heart and their life. There's no longer anything that's pure or holy or divine. A mysterious spirit of lawlessness is now in control and reigns in their lives. Listen to me, my beloved friends. I know, I know of people that were Christians, that, that were dads, that were husbands to their wives and dads to their children. And then later in life, they left their wife, they left their home, they left their kids so that they can become homosexual and they're Christian music artists that's repulsive that's sickening so what we're going to do is we're going to find us a church that agrees with our lifestyle and we can still sing our Christian music and we're going to find somebody that will support us and sell our records that are, is okay with. You're, you're okay. You can live that way if you want to. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. You can still sing your music. And we Christians just keep buying it. We just keep buying it. Don't buy it. Why? Because I don't want to support that. I'm not supporting his lifestyle. That is not true. That's false. That's not genuine. That's confusion and chaos. People are confused about that. Why? How could they leave? Oh, well, they just weren't saved, Pastor. Yes, they were. They knew the Lord, and they know what's right and wrong in the will of God. They've changed the word. They've changed what God has said, and they've twisted it to adapt it to their life. Rather than change their life to align up with the word of God, they've changed the word of God to line up with their life. That's what's going on. Now, you, can I keep going? Is that okay? You know, I'm going to hurry, okay? You might ask, how, 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 how is this possible? How can this happen? At one time, the spirit of the living God possessed that temple. He once ruled and reigned in their lives. God lived in the throne of their heart. It was obvious they loved God with all their heart. They were faithful. They were committed. They were loyal to God and his work. What happened? What happened? That's a great question. I believe this is why the Bible, okay now, hold on. This is why the Bible gives you and I, people like us, warnings. Warnings in the Bible. If you couldn't fall away, why does God put the warning in the Bible? If you can't grow cold, why does God put the warning in the Bible? Warning about becoming careless in our walk with God. He warns us about this. 
Beware of the sin of unbelief. He warns us about this. Beware of drifting away. He warns us about this. Jesus warns the church of Ephesus, Ephesus about leaving their first love for Jesus. He warns the church about allowing false doctrine and the doctrine of Balaam. He warns us about becoming lukewarm or passive. These warnings are in the Bible for a reason, sir, ma'am. We don't push it off. They're in there for a reason. Now listen, I'm going to say this, and you may not agree with me. That's okay. You have the right to your own opinion. But there will always be a Christ on the throne in every heart. There will be a Christ on the throne in every heart. Either it's Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, or the Antichrist. It's either Christ or the Antichrist. Every person has a Christ on the throne of their heart. It's either the spirit of Christ or the spirit of Antichrist. It's one or the other. There are no in-betweens. Now, let me just say this, church. You may disagree with me, but I'm totally convinced that one of the many ways of Satan's most effective means of getting into the hearts of people today, and especially our current generation, is this. It is through phones... I'm going to say this, it is through media devices, your iPads, your, your phones, cable, television. It is through media and social platforms, things like TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. And listen, there are good things on there as long as you can manage it, as long as you're strong enough to stay away from the filth and the garbage. I mean, because what's happening is Satan is trying to slowly get into your mind. And so now when I'm on YouTube, when I'm on YouTube, and maybe you've seen this, and I, what I do on YouTube when I'm in my office and I'm studying or I'm praying or I'm in the Word or preparing for a message, my wife has got, got me onto this thing where there, there are nature scenes and you can hear the birds chirping and you can hear the water in the creek and it's real gentle music, real instrumental music, and it's so soothing and so relaxing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, I, love, I can listen to that all day. And just be in the word and be with the Lord and just pray and be and, and just prepare in the word of God. But now what comes on the right hand of a screen is a is a promotion or an advertisement that asks the question, how do you know if you're gay? Just push the button and take the test. How do you know if you're gay? trying to reach our young generation today. Listen, listen, we as the church cannot sit idle. I feel this with a passion in my heart. We can't sit here and just play Christian, just go through our little Christi Christian uh, 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 performance. We can't do that. There is a war. Satan is after people. He's after their soul. He's after the church. He's after children. We've got to feel something within our heart. A burden within us that'll cry out to God, that'll pray, that'll do something. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at Satan. I'm mad at evil. I'm mad at the direction that things are going. I'm a little perturbed with the church today because we love entertainment. We love performance. What's happened through the years as pastors have be we become an entertainment church with a big stage, a big platform now. This is what's going on. Not in all places, but I see it a lot of times to where the people don't have to put any effort into it. They don't have to pray. They don't have to seek God. They, they can just be there. And the church performs. Well, I'm sorry, but we're not a performance church. We're just not. We need people like yourselves that are committed to God, that know how to pray, that can cry out to the Lord, that can bring your measure of faith, that will pray with your pastor and believe God for souls to be saved and delivered and set free because people are in bondage and their minds are deceived and their hearts are deceived. And I see people on the street, and I wonder, Lord, how can we reach them? How, Lord, can we reach them? Will they listen? Will they listen? You can invite folks to church. Oh, praise God. I, I, I know, I know, I know churches like this won't be popular, and I know preaching like this won't be popular. I know that. <laughs> but I love it when preachers just get down into the word. And I love preachers that just tell it how it is. Preach the truth. Don't sugarcoat it. Give me the truth, for the truth will set me free. Praise God. Amen is right. Praise God. Praise God. 
brother and sister Justice, they, their son Logan's a pa pastor. And, and uh, brother Tom, I tell me, you know, he's kind of like old school, and I've seen him preach, man. I like that. He's a young man. He's in his 30s. And that's what I love to see God raise up people like that, that know the word and know God and know the spirit of the Lord. You've got to know the spirit of the Lord and you've got to know the voice of God. And there's a touch of God. There's an anointing of the Lord upon that young man's life. And God's going to use him. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God that souls would come to know the Lord. But we need people like that today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That a minister the word of almighty God. Yes, there'll always be a Christ on the throne either. It'll be Christ the Lord or it'll be the Antichrist, my friend. There are media and social platforms, uh, TikTok and Facebook and, and Twitter and these things uh, that really have not much of, of regulations uh, and that they have the whole world of evil in the palm of their hand. And, and he knows the eye is the gateway to the heart. And Satan marches straight through the corrupted and jaded eye of the Christian and attempts to take the throne of his heart. Just look at this. I've had things come across on Facebook. Just click on that button. They want, they want, they want to suck you into looking at women that aren't dressed properly and pornography. No, you delete it. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the living room. My wife is there next to me, and something like that comes on, my, and I show her. I said, "Look at this. Look at this. What do you do? Just bring it to the light. Expose it. Don't give in to it. Satan waits for the opportune time when you're weak, when you're low, to try to get you hooked up on things like that. That's the antichrist spirit trying to get into the, the eye of your heart. If he can get in through your eyes, if he can get in through your ears, if he can somehow get in your eye, your heart." Satan wants to take over the throne of your heart. And he's doing it today by untold numbers. This is why the Antichrist has taken control of secular media and networks that don't tell the truth anymore. The whole story. Movie productions and the press and Disney. Ephesians 2 and 2. The prince of power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. The spirit of lawlessness is growing bolder and bolder in the days we're living in. You can feel it. You can sense it. You can see it. Antifa and BLM. Violent riot. Abortions, murder, rape, incest, senseless murders, women that gloat and, and, and are proud and gloat and, and uh, talk about how many abortions that they've had. Our society is on the brink of becoming a raging hell. The Antichrist spirit now permeates our schools and our courts, uh, streets and businesses and homes. you got school boards, uh, state school boards uh, that can't even give you the definition of gender now. Although you have the this definition of science, uh, multi-genderism. That's a lie. That's not true, my friend. That's the Antichrist spirit in the school system. And sadly, this evil spirit is rapidly growing and moving into the church. Christians now drinking alcohol. Should I just preach it today or not? Christians, Christians now drinking alcohol and Christian weddings full of alcohol. Oh, this is a Christian wedding. And once they say, I do, and pronounce them man and wife, what do they do? They go to the booze. They go to the bottle. That is the Antichrist spirit. You know what's happening today? Christians are drinking just like sinners. They've twisted the Bible. They've taken one verse and twisted it. They've taken it out of context. If you think it's okay for a Christian, a child of God, that has the holy, pure spirit of the Lord dwelling within their hearts to drink alcohol, you are gravely mistaken. Amen. Abstain from the very appearance of evil. But there are people out there today, and Christians out there, and oh, they're wonderful people, and they're great people. They're deceived. Oh, but they're so fun and so friendly, but they're deceived. Oh, but they seem to have such a great time, but they're deceived. I have a greater time having no sin than having sin. I have a greater time in the presence of God when I know that there's nothing that's separating me from the Lord. I have a greater time knowing that I'm walking in obedience to the will of Almighty God. And I have his presence and his power and his nearness. I have the glory of the Lord. I have the power of Almighty God and the anointing of Christ upon my life. That is more better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
All right. I, I, well, I might as well just blow it up. I might as well. Just, why quit now, Pastor? You might as well blow it up. You're calling. No, no stone left unturned today, right? This has been bothering me for some time. I was just waiting for the church to, to get ready enough to, for me to preach it. So I figured when half of you are here, <laughs> might as well do it. <laughs> All right, let me just go a little bit further. Now, you may, dis you may disagree, you may disagree, but I believe the spirit of the Antichrist is establishing churches all over the United States. Yes, I do, and all over the world. The spirit, this spirit is the motivating force behind the seeker-friendly movement, I tell you the truth, giving people what they want instead of what they need. Preachers preaching soft messages that cater to the flesh, making the sanctuary of God look like a dark nightclub. The music has become a replica of the world. Let me ask you, where is the touch of God? Where is the spirit of the Lord? Where is the separation? Where is the anointing of the Lord? Where is the presence of God? They have a spirit, but not the spirit. And God will have no part of that which is manufactured by the flesh. But listen, people love it. They cater to it. They run after it. Oh, get all the lights. Get the smoke machine. Get the fog machine. Let's get up there on the platform and let's. I, I know it seems funny, but this is what they do. And they, but they got some songs that are okay. I like them. But there's a mixture. They don't know the difference. So what do they got to do? Well, they know they got some people that are saved, so they got to entertain them. They got some people that are not saved, so they're going. You've seen it. Can you play that before the throne? Would God accept that? Would fire consume that sacrifice? And now people are misunderstanding what is God. And they take that as being God. They take that as being the Lord. And so that's God. No, that's the world. That's the flesh. That's the Antichrist spirit. I said, well, we'll, we'll take that too. So we'll take Baal and we'll take God. We'll take Asherah, Baal, and God. How about we just put it all together and be a mixture? And everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. You get your God, you get your God, I get my God. It's killing me. It's killing me. I, I've thrown my hands up so many times. I said, God, I said, my wife, I said, I can't compete against this. We're just trying to keep it right, keep it straight, keep it real. Keep it pure, keep it holy, keep it truthful, going forth the spirit of God. We want the Lord's hand and touch and knowing upon it. We want God's approval. She said, just forget it. I can't compete against it. Just quit, forget it. Go do something else. And my wife says, you can't quit. So what do you mean I can't quit? She says, because there needs to be somebody that will stand up and tell the truth. There needs to be somebody that has the guts to get up and declare the word of Almighty God. True, isn't it? It's true. People might love it, cater to it, but God's nowhere near it. The spirit of Antichrist in the church, it's in the pulpit, it's on the stage. God's not into performance. He's into ministering the truth because the truth will set you free. You may disagree with me, but it just seems like the church is trying to come up with new ways to get away from preaching God's word. It's because people don't want to be uh, to hear reproof or correction. They don't want, want to be told that they might be doing something wrong or living wrong. We live in a soft age where we are running from conviction. So they hear a gospel that's almost totally devoid of repentance and judgment. They're told everything about God's love, mercy, and grace and how to cope with their problems, but nothing of God's deliverance and judgment. They are being lulled to sleep in their sinful lifestyle. They're told it's okay as long as you come to church. Make them feel good while they're dying and going to hell in their sins. Listen, God is a God of love. I agree. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of kindness and loving kindness and tender mercies and grace. We all agree with this absolutely, but also he's a God of judgment. What does that mean? It means that we need to preach a balanced message. That's what it means. We can't stay away from what we don't like and only embrace what we do like. We can't preach a humanistic gospel that appeals to the ears of the flesh. We have to make sure that we're preaching a balanced message. We must preach the whole counsel of God's word. I must give you the whole loaf of bread, whether you like it or not. 
when I was growing up, my mom made me eat my vegetables. She made, I thought she's, my, I thought she, my mom made me eat my vegetables. Well, I didn't, you know what? I got mad at mom. She might be watching. She kind of watches, you know. <laughs> and, and I'd get mad at mom because she'd make me eat my vegetables. Well, there's some vegetables I liked. Well, I liked mom when she gave me these. I, I love corn. Oh, yeah. I like corn on the cob. There's, there's a picture there, John. I like corn. I like corn on the cob. I like, I like green peas. I like green beans. You all like that stuff? I like that, man. You slap some butter on there, put some salt on there, and I can eat that all day long. Oh, yeah. Getting hungry, aren't you? But then my mom did this. She made me eat spinach. Ugh. And that's what it looked like in a bowl. Listen to me. That's spinach. You could put butter on it. You could put salt on it. You could put all things on it. But it's still spinach, and it's nasty. Nasty. I would have dry heaves. I would gag. And my mom, guess what? She made me eat spinach. She said, it's good for you. And then she said this. It'll put hair on your chest. Well, guess what? Mom was right. <laughs> it did do that. But the Bible warns us of churches with forms of godliness but without power. They want what makes them feel good about themselves rather than the truth that delivers. My mom says, you can have peas, you can have beans, you can have corn, you can have corn on the cob, but you got to have spinach. Why is that? Because I love you. Why, mom, are you making me eat this spinach? Because I care about you. Why, mom, are you forcing me to eat and stay at the table until I'm done? She says, because I'm concerned about your growth. you getting it? So I'm giving you some spinach today. A little bit of spinach. Go ahead. Eat up. Bon appetit. It's kind of rough, isn't it? But this message is for you and for me and for all of us. The Bible warns us of things like this. Have you noticed this going on today? They want to make them feel good about themselves Rather than telling the truth, you notice that going on today? Let me just ask you this. Who brought the music for the world into the church? Who turned weekly prayer meetings into entertainment nights? Who made Christians more concerned whether their team wins the Super Bowl than whether the lost are safe? What happened? What happened? Well, we're going to. Sunday night service, and we're gonna we're gonna wear our favorite team's uniform. We're gonna have Super Bowl night at church. Look, you, you can have Super Bowl night if you want, but don't call it something that's of the church. I know of pastors firsthand that promote this kind of thing. I think when we gather together, I'm looking for the Messiah. I'm looking for Jesus. I'm looking for the presence of the Lord. I didn't come just to sing a few songs or just to hear the preacher preach. I've come to meet the King of kings and Lord of lords. I've come to meet the Lord. I've come to come into his presence and experience his power and his glory because I need the Lord. And souls are going to a lost and dying hell. And I've got family that need to be saved. And I need a word from the Lord because I've been having a hard week. And the devil's fighting me. And I've had trials and difficulties. And I've got to have something from the Lord. I've got to fall at the feet of Jesus at the foot of the cross and worship him and get something from heaven that will sustain me, help me, strengthen me through the next day and the next day and the next day. And there ain't no football that's going to do that. Don't worry, I like OSU. Okay. But I think you understand what I'm saying. The spirit of Antichrist. He's telling Christians they can drink from the two cups. I'm, I'm closing. He's telling Christians they can drink from two cups. That's what's going on today. And, 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 and I'm upset with pre preachers and pastors. I'm upset with them. They're telling Christians they can drink from two cups. You can have the Lord's cup, and you can have the cup of demons. Well, pastor, they don't really say, no, 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 no. They don't come out and say you can have the cup of demons. What they do is they don't tell you that's wrong, and they say it's okay. 
That's the cup of demons. Look at this. 1 Corinthians 10.21. Look at this. Look at this. And, I, and I'm coming to a close. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. And you cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Will a man halter between two ways? you got to make a choice. We have to make a choice. You might be thinking, man, pastor, this is really scary. And how, how does a Christian get to the point of being overcome by the Antichrist spirit? How does that happen? Well, there are two causes by which the spirit of Antichrist can overcome a Christian. And by the grace of God, I hope to tell you that next week. There are two causes that I'll tell you next week if you show up. You don't want to miss that one. Because we are living very, very peculiar times. Church, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to wake us up to understand the dreadful position that we're in today and what's going on. I know Jesus can come at any moment. Are you rapture ready? And I know the Antichrist is going to come. We know that. We know that. We know he's coming. The Bible tells us he's coming. But I'm telling my beloved friends, what we're dealing with right now is the spirit of Antichrist. And he's gotten into the church. And we're not as faithful as we used to be. We're not as committed as we used to be. I realize that God is separating right now. She from goes, I know that. And God will always have a remnant that are dedicated and sold out to him. I want to be a part of that remnant. Hallelujah. Don't you want to be a part of that remnant? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Don't let your hearts become cold. Don't allow that spirit of Antichrist to come into your home, into your life, or to your husband, to your wife. Are you praying for your husband, wife? Are you praying for your wife, husband? Are you praying for your children? Are you praying for your grandchildren? Are you praying for this nation? Are you praying for this world? And what's going on today? Where one puts a thousand to flight, two put ten thousand to flight. Our prayers make a difference. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Your prayers matter. The devil tries to tell you they don't, but they do. But I've got family that do not know the Lord. I've got, I've got. Ken folks that do not know the Lord, and I want them to know Christ. I want them to know Jesus. I want my kids sold out for the Lord and their wives sold out for God. And, 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 and you know, it came to me, and, and so when it came to me, I said, oh, yeah. And so we start praying for our grandbaby. And I pray that our grandbaby, we don't know the name yet, but God knows the name. And we do know it's a boy, okay, whether a boy or a girl, but it's not a boy. I pray that he serves God with love and passion and fervency. So we begin to pray for our grandbaby. Hallelujah. Praise God. We need to pray. Can we stand together here today, please? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We praise you, Lord. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother John, you got some music there. You're going to start for us here this morning or today. But God is the answer, amen. He is the one that we need. He is our all in all. He is our God. He is our Lord. But my beloved friends, I want you to know that either two Christ, one of two will reign and rule on the throne of your heart. And it's going to be either the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, or the spirit of Antichrist. I don't know about you, but I want the spirit of the Lord. How many want Christ to rule and reign in their hearts and their lives? Hallelujah. I want God to rule and reign in our lives. How many of you have people that are not saved? How many that you know, family members or friends or co-workers or neighbors that are not saved? I want to have kind of a little bit of different altar call here today. And I would like to invite you to come up here and let's take a few moments and find a place to pray. And I want you to pray for the lost. I want you to pray for your brothers or your sisters that don't know the Lord. I want you to pray for the apostate Christian. I want you to pray for the prodigal. I want you to pray for that one that's run away from God. I want you to pray. Pray for the church and pray for the body of Christ. Come. You can come. It's okay. You can come. But this morning, I want us to just... 
have a little bit different of an altar call. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for the lost. I'm going to pray for those that are deceived by the spirit of Antichrist. I want to pray for their soul. I want to pray for their salvation. Hallelujah. I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We serve a good God. We serve a great God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I don't want to be deceived and I don't want to be caught away by the spirit of Antichrist. I want my heart to blaze for the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord, touch us, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who we're praying for, God. We lift them up in the name of Jesus that they would come to know the Lord. Oh, God, we pray. We pray for their soul. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, we lift them up before you, God, in the name of Jesus, to draw them, to speak to them, to save them, to deliver them, to open their eyes, to bring them out of darkness, God. I pray in the name of the Lord. We'll not give up praying. We'll not give up praying. We'll not give up. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Touch us, Lord, today. I'm asking in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, our loved ones. Touch our loved ones. Touch our loved ones, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of the Lord, we pray. You are the answer, Lord. We come to you. We believe by faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray for their soul. We pray for them right now, God. Lord, draw them, convict them, speak to them. Lord, bring them out of darkness. They're deceived, God. Bring them out of deception. Let them see the truth, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to trust the Lord. I want you to trust God. Christ rules and reigns in my life and my heart. Nothing else but the Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord. I pray for loved ones. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All we can do, God, is cry out to you. Cry out to the living God. Cry out to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, help us, God. Oh, God, we need you. And we pray for our loved ones, Lord, to come to know Christ, to come to know the Lord. I lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I pray, God, pray for my son. I lift him up before you. And I pray for his wife, Izzy. But God, also pray for that grandbaby. Oh, God, for a healthy delivery in the name of Jesus. And you have your hand upon that child. The anointing of God, the spirit of the Lord in his heart. That has a hundred and desire to serve the Lord. Oh, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Your touch, your power, your grace upon my son and his wife, Father. Lord God, use them for your purpose and your glory. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we're going to toe the line. We're going to live our lives for you. You're going to rule and reign in our hearts. Christ Jesus is the one that sits on the throne of our heart. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, protect him, Lord. Every hand upon him, Father, I pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh God, I pray. I pray for the lost friends and loved ones and people I know, God. I pray for their soul. I pray. I beseech you, God. I beg you, God, the name of the Lord. I want to be used as a prayer of intercession. I pray in the name of the Lord. Oh, God, I pray in Jesus' name. Almighty God, touch us, help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. Pray for my sons. And I lift them up before you, God. Oh Lord, I want them to know Christ. I want them to be saved. The mother's heart aches. The burden in her heart and her soul. God, I pray. Hear the cry of your child, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, to reach them, to draw them, God, in the name of the Lord. I pray, I beseech you, I cry out to God for the lost and for souls and for Mary and and so many that are bound and so many that are blinded and they're hooked on drugs and hooked on alcohol and hooked on immorality and they're being deceived, God. They got the evil of the world in the palm of their hands, Lord. And they see all the filth and Satan gets in through their eyes and to their heart. And destroys the simplicity of their heart, God, and the purity of their soul, and corrupts them, Almighty God. Lord, I pray, 
oh God, I pray, oh God, for souls, I pray that our hearts would ache for the lost, that we would feel the burden of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my decision is for the Lord, for God. And I pray for my loved ones to know Christ. I pray that Christ Jesus would sit on the throne of my heart, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Glory to God. He has preeminence in my heart and my life. Praise God. For his Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and we heart. worship him and we praise him and we glorify him. To pull me praise to him. God. Hallelujah. Jesus, our in Lord. His love and praise God. Would you just worship the Lord today? And I run, I run after him. Oh, how I love him, how I worship him. Yes, Lord, draw us to you, Lord God, I pray. God, draw the lost to you, Lord, I pray. Do not be deceived, oh God, but know the truth, and know God, and know your word, and know your voice, and know your spirit, and your presence. God, I pray in the name of the Lord. I pray for the body of Christ that you would touch them. I pray for the loved ones. I pray for their children and grandchildren. I pray for their families. I pray they come to know Christ and live their life for the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus for the power of your spirit, your touch, your convicting power. Lord, I pray for this city. I pray for this state. I pray for this nation. God, I pray for the soul of this nation. But God, most of all, I pray that this nation would turn to Christ. This nation would turn to you. The hearts of men and women would turn to Christ. For that is the answer. That is the answer. I must have Christ. I must have Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Praise God. Don't you love the Lord, church? Amen. I love Him. Be great. Praise the Lord. This is what I see going on today. This is what I see going on today. Pray, church, like you never prayed before. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, please get this message. Please work this in your heart. Please know what's going on today and make a difference. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Feel it. Feel the burden. Pray for the lost. Pray for souls. Oh, praise God. Tonight, we're going to have service again. <laughs> and we have practice for choir at 530. And at 630, we'll have our service, okay? So let's come gather together tonight in this wonderful house of the Lord, the house of prayer. And let's worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stand together, please. God bless you. The Lord bless you. He's so wonderful. We give him all the glory and all the praise. Praise God. Sister Terry, would you mind praying for us today? Amen.